Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series Tip Top Pro Level Ladder Action on the cards this afternoon, very exciting stuff First of all, a quick plea coming in from none other than my illustrious self Guys, I know a uh, frequent part of these casts, certainly the uh, opening to these matches is me apologising for the infrequency of casts in general. Well, today is no exception. I've had a few people uh, get in contact with me either directly or via the comment section of the videos complaining about the frequency. Uh, all I can say, guys, is I'm doing my absolute best. It's really, really tough. Um, I'm trying to do all this while at the same time simultaneously looking after and trying to provide for a family. Uh, and when I am at home and I do have free time, they're uh, often in the house as well, which makes life really, really difficult trying to get these things out. Like, I've just had to send them out for a walk. Uh, you know, they're just like, go, just w what should we do? Because it's half term this week. So it's like, what should we do? Uh, just g go out the door, keep walking until I call you guys to tell you to come back. So that is literally my life right now. Plus, uh, all of the uh, illnesses that come with it that take the time. So, like, last week I was in bed all week with tonsillitis. I managed to get the epic out the week before that, and then the week before that, we were all down with norovirus, so it's, uh, yeah, fun and games there. And uh, I'm just not in a position to get things out as quickly as, say, a lot of the other YouTubers out there, the 18, 19, 20-something kids who have different lifestyles to me. They don't have the family and all the rest of that. So all I can say is, guys, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm doing my absolute best. Uh, anyway, the sub story's over. Let's return to the actual fun, shall we? Like I said, it's going to be a pro-level ladder match. Very exciting, and that's going to go down on Twin Rivers. The players are excited, you're excited, and I'm sure as hell excited. Let's get on over to the game zone and see how these guys got on. Twin Rivers, we know what we're dealing with here. Let's take a look at our players. Down here at the bottom left, in the blue corner, it's none other than Red Viper going his very typical... Cyber in there he is, opening first land, are we going to get a second factory in? Yeah we go, it's going to be first land, second air, very consistent with the meta for Twin Rivers there. And then we're going third land there as well. Let's take a look at his opponent up here at the top right in the red corner. It's none other than Zlow going his very quintessential Cybrin. Also very unsurprisingly consistent with the meta opening first land and going second air there. So it's a Cybrin mirror matchup. Zlow, of course, uh, well, probably the favorite to win this, it would be fair to say. I don't think the Red Viper would be too cross with me for saying that. He's uh, giving up a couple of hundred points there in global ladder ranking of course that's not everything but we know it has some measure upon the way things work we're not seeing any super early aggression out from the red viper but Zlo has decided to get all saucy with the action early on he's thrown out a hunter that lab making its way towards the western river there and i've got one guess that's all i need where that's going and it's going to be right down here there we go waypoints into that little nook at the back that poor engineer no one wants that job it's like you're you're built what's my assignment sir uh, you've got to go and make the two mass extractors in ah crap yeah pretty much so there we go that hunter is en route but of course standard play though that is red viper well aware that's a threat gets the intel unit out early that mole gonna nestle in next to the river there if we take a look at the Viper's view, that uh, lab will soon come into radar coverage. There it is, so now well aware of the threat. Take that back to observe. We're going to get some offensive unit. There it is, the Mantis under construction from the Red Viper. He's going to be sending that directly over to the far corner, I'm sure, to try and protect those mass extractors. And that engineer who has now nestled himself right next to the corner there to try and evade his impending doom. Lab makes contact with the mechs. Uh, not that interested by the look of things in just the mass extractors. He is searching for that engineer. Knows there should be one in the area, but the Mantis has caught up with him. And it's going to be close. Slow is paying attention. A little bit of a wiggle there at the end, but not enough micro to keep that lab alive. That engineer will survive with a very healthy looking 82 hit points. No trouble there. Two scout planes out for both players here. One of which is likely to get shot down very soon. There it goes thanks to an early interceptor there from a Red Viper. Another offensive land unit coming in now from Zlo. This time it's a Mantis coming down the eastern 
side of the central reservation there. Interestingly enough, no player, or neither player I should say, going for any of the reclaim early doors in the center of the map. Perhaps the meta on this is changing. I've certainly been out of contact generally with the game for quite a while now, as you guys know, so maybe this is part of a new thing, but i got to say, seems strange to me, there's a lot of mass to get your hands on. Of course, any early engineer that stomps his way up there is in danger of getting blown to smithereens by a light assault bot. That is the nature of things. Another mole sent up. In fact, that might have been the one that scouted initially for the Red Viper. I think it probably was. He's probably not going to keep that alive for very long. Though. There it goes. Down goes the mole. Another one inbound for the Viper with two Mantis in tow. Those two Mantis are going to take care of another mole from Zlow. But I don't think he's going to push that any further up, being as uh, he will know Zlow is well aware of the danger. A little bit of uh, exchange of fire there between two Mantis over in the east. Zlow got the better half of the trade there. Looks like uh, the Red Viper's Mantis much more heavily damaged. What was that? Was that an engineer? I think it was, and it was busy, busy building a T1 PD. That's not going to get completed. Autogun now slowly degrading below 350 HP. Nice little run by up top from the Red Viper. Gets a couple of Mantis into that other starting location. And a bomber off as well from the Red Viper, but that gets shot down by defending interceptors from Zlow. The engineer took a little bit of damage off those bombs but manages to survive with 45 hit points so well done there those other mantis tied it up in the middle and importantly for slow four of those t1 mechs is still online meanwhile another few mantis making their way up the center here red, red viper really piling on the pressure in the early games low saying all those damn raids actually that's just slow to all saying damn raids there we go uh reading is hard even uh, for someone as aged as myself. But uh, Zlo under the pressure here in the early game from the Red Viper. His Mantis backing up once again, although not really gaining any territory here. Zlo doing a pretty nice job of tidying up generally as and when they come in. But that's a lot of build capacity to lose at the back there. The final Mantis does go down from the Red Viper, but Zlow really has to be every, everywhere right now. There's just an endless stream of T1 units coming north from the Red Viper. It's interesting we're not seeing quite so many come south from Zlow. Well, that would be why we already have a T2 land HQ. So Zlow having to contain all of this garbage that's coming north so far and all the while upgrading to early T2. How does that match up with the Viper down here at the bottom? Well, he is sticking with the T1, just going mass T1 on every front right now and keeps sending those units north. Nice little sandwich effect there from Slow as he pins another platoon of Mantis up against that river. They're going to have to back up. Another group coming in slightly further south and to the east from Zlow. Not presenting the best formation there. He's going to lose a couple of Mantis before he desists. Mass extractor down on the eastern portion of the map. Meanwhile, as the Red Viper continues to push. Now, both players in the vicinity with their ACUs now. Slow turning up on the scene just a little too late to save that forward mass extractor. Red Viper's going to get a radar system online. I like that play. And just as Slow thinks he's likely to pick up some kills here, Red Viper is going to surely scupper that plan by bringing his ACU forward. Is he not? Well, I think he must be somewhere else right now because he's lost a few units. He had a position there to pile on some extra pressure, maybe gain some extra territory. Didn't take advantage. Meanwhile, a little drop by Zlo to the north western side island. The Skyhook got shot down, but the engineers survived, and they're busying themselves with picking up the necessary structures required to expand on that island. Red Viper is in the vicinity with his own aircraft, but they're massively outnumbered. Those interceptors shot down 
one by one by Slow's Air Force there as the two commanders finally do intertwine near the center of the map here. Slow's ACU focusing on the Vipers. So we're on to about 8,300 HP for Viper. Slow, meanwhile, though, into the yellow, 6,500 and falling. There's an awful lot of Mantis coming in now for the Red Viper. Slow under pressure, but would you look at all the Rhinos that have just turned up on the scene. R Viper using his overcharge to good effect to take care of those. That AC will go some way to mitigating this advantage Slow has on the ground with the T2. There goes another two Rhinos with a nice overcharge, and a lot of these Mantis haven't been moving forward. We've got another band, though, coming in from the west, but it's not going to be enough to really put Slow's ACU any danger there. I thought we were in danger of an early finish, but too many Rhinos emerging from the factories. Slow now with what seems to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six T2 factories plus the... T2 HQ and now it's Viper who finds himself in retreat as those Rhinos press forward. He's still got 4,600 HP and he's very close to another rank of veterancy or a rank of veterancy. He's got one already so it is another. But a nice little tangle there early on. Certainly gets the heart rate going. Couple of Mantis broke through there from the Viper but Zlo in position to tidy those up with his ACU. Now bottom side island there open for the taking. Red Viper probably got a bit excited there. Thought he might have been in position to take the win. Needs to now focus and get a transport over there to make sure he doesn't fall behind economically speaking 56 to 54 so far in eco and now 54 to 54 so these two really very very close indeed in terms of eco take a look at reclaim figures in just a moment as the last couple of mantis on that mini push there in the west come a cropper against that auto gun of Zlo's. lots of t1 now massing around the red vipers acu Plenty of protection, plenty of pushing power, but of course he's now operating at a tech deficit. Do we have T2 on the way? Well, we have some control Ks of some old T1 factories there that would suggest that he's... At, well, no, he's already got it, in fact. There we go. So that is completed. And he's now starting to work on some T2 units. Is that a Viper? We've got that. No, it's not. It's a Banger. So a little bit of mobile anti-air early on to help protect his ground forces. Scout plane out over there with a couple of bombers from the Red Viper suggests he might be thinking about making a play for that soon. Definitely doesn't want to leave it too long. 67 to 56 now in favor of Zlow. Zlow ahead in eco in this one. Taking a look at reclaim figures. So we're approaching 6,000 mass there reclaims for Zlo. And the Red Viper has banked about 6,300. So pretty much neck and neck there as well. Lots of mass extractors available to grab up front for the Red Viper if he can forge another successful push here. Getting an upgrade on his commander. That completes, and that looks like the stealth upgrade there, the blue haze. There we go. Personal stealth generator, nothing else on there as yet. So that's going to help uh, protect his commander. And there is the transport. Looks like we've got three or four units, four units of build capacity on board there, making its way over to the side island. So that's going to allow him, hopefully, to catch up and uh, equalize this game. But this is good early sustained pressure at the beginning of this one from the Red Viper has had Zlow on the back foot throughout. Now still working with T2. We've got some way before we can get to T3. We've got one T2 power generator online there for Zlow. And you can see he's got a uh, pretty sizable advantage thanks to that in power generation. 1.4 to 700 there. 7 to 800. A 
few rhinos up by the western river for Zlo. Now they were trying to make the uh, run by possible there, but uh, now taking Medusa shells. A few EMPs knocking them out temporarily, but they managed to make it out of there in one piece. A bombing run there from a T1 bomber from Zlo, landing flush right in the center of those troops there, taking down four T1 units and heavily damaging a couple more. Take a look at Zlo's field of view as those interceptors cruise over that bottom right island. He'll now be aware that that's been taken, but he won't want to give it up necessarily. In comes a Skyhook with uh, some offensive units on board. Doesn't look like we've got any build capacity. It looks like a couple of rhinos in there, so he wants to stop this base from going online before it gets established. We don't have any land factory as yet. We do have an auto gun that's under construction. That's about seven, 800 hit points complete out of its total 1300. He's going to have to hurry slow if he wants to prevent that from going online. Doesn't have any artillery with him. Three units of build capacity on that construction there. That's going to go online, but with the wall sections not up as well, will they be able to protect this. I don't think they will as Rhino is going to be able to plow through that without those wall sections. One engineer remains in the far corner but it looks to me like Slow might have nullified that side island before it even got going there for the Red Viper. Another Skyhook inbound this time with six units of build capacity so making a play for that in a big way. Large Mantis push meanwhile over in the west Red Viper needs to reposition immediately not in a good situation there at all. Has got some hoplites and assaulted T2 units in the mix there. I like what I'm seeing. Very little in the way of mobile anti-air on this side of the field for the Red Viper. So all of this T1 is just getting harassed to death. That was a beautiful bomb. Would you look at that? 12 kills for that T1 bomber. And I bet you most of those, if not all, were picked up in that one bombing run. Lovely thing to see indeed. <laughs> bomber knocked out or EMP'd by a Medusa shell in mid-air pauses as if time isn't a thing and then proceeds to fall out of the air hilarious stuff here in the first 15 minutes of this one the Red Viper though looks for a moment like he was on top there is that reclaim figures that's bolstering Zlo's eco or not hard to tell in this one there is an updated mod or interface mod that people have been telling me to use and I just haven't got around to it as uh, with most things as you know but uh, definitely want to look into that it's a good little story there considering I don't know who made it where it was posted on the forums actually I do have a link somewhere but a nice little drop onto the rear plateau there from Zlow six mantis moving in now there's a lot of build capacity here that's just going to get shredded if those Mantis get in amongst them, the question is how long is it going to be before Red Viper notices the danger? All that build capacity could more or less insta-build some T1 PD, but Red Viper not paying attention. Those Mantis are going to cruise in there, and it's just horrible. Civilians getting utterly slaughtered in this fashion. They're even quick to reclaim. It's like cannibals reclaiming their own buddies as they fall. Well... It's not whatnot. That is just hard to watch. <laughs> Red Viper definitely with his attention elsewhere. In comes a Jester, or was for a moment at least. In comes a Jester. Ideal unit to counter these with, being as there's no anti air in the vicinity for them and no intercepts inbound either. But a nice little push down the eastern edge of the map. From Zlo gets a couple of rhinos in there and he's wiped out land factory and all four of the mexes from that other starting location down there. Down goes a hoplite banger with no way to protect itself is going to follow. And now bottom right edge of the Red Viper's base is very exposed to attack. Meanwhile a big push on the left hand edge from Zlo who is now facing T3 units. So this will be why he finds himself with a numeracy advantage, or a numerical advantage, I should say, 
That upgrade will have cost him a few things, and there it is. Vital that he keeps that online, repels this attack. I suggest if he doesn't manage to, that is game right there. But those rhinos unable to crack that front line, not with those loyalists in the mix. While a large intermingling of troops going on up here. Nice formation set out there from Slow. Viper advancing without any real cohesion. All with T1, which is pretty much getting slaughtered. And what Mantis do make it towards the uh, anywhere near the base. We've got Cerberus turrets and uh, or a Cerberus turret and a T1 PD that's ready to hose them down should they get too close. But would you look at the state of affairs eco-wise for the Red Viper? He's lost one. Well, he had all those four lost. This one up here, five, six, seven, eight. Those two up there, nine, ten mexes. Surely has to be uh, reclaimed there. Well, it's not. Somehow, he's significantly ahead in eco. It's like a slow just forgot to do it. Is he bottlenecking on power or something? Well, he is uh, low on uh, power generation, but he's got a lot in the tank. 157 there. Well, that drops down for a moment to 55. Or jumping back up again. Hard to say, but it certainly looks like the Red Viper's doing okay, considering the uh, lack of integrity he's got on the field, militarily speaking. Loyalists have advanced somewhat and gained ground, but what the Viper is gaining on the left, he's losing on the right. Another large group of units, all rhinos, making their way down the eastern river. Red Viper looked like he was going to try and march his com in there. Claim a few lives with that overcharge, no doubt, but an awful lot of T2 units to get your com in amongst all by himself. One Renegade out there causing problems up front from Slow. That gets taken down by the interceptors from Red Viper, but that means, of course, Slow is up to T2. Another drop coming in from Zlo. We'll see where that's going as we hold the shift key. Well, that's coming right in the back onto the rear plateau. Looks like that consists of about four rhinos or so. Another drop, I think, there. Just T1 Mantis getting into the main base. The Red Viper under really heavy, sustained pressure here. As Zlo repays him in kind for all of that early, early in-game pressure see the difference that the wall sections make to a PD there blocking almost all of that rhino fire and keeping that point defense alive but successful drop onto the rear plateau another lone rhino tearing its way up the middles 17 kills on that bad boy loyalists repositioning to try and get a handle on this situation but it is just absolute carnage left right and center another drop coming in down here that looks like mostly t1 mantis with a medusa or two and another drop coming in here this time from a dragonfly so we're moving up to t2 transports now it's a good thing because that's been spotted in his under air attack he manages to drop all of those medusas before that transport gets shot down that transport will get shot down but that's yet more reinforcements on the ground for Zlow. But we do have a brick bearing down on those forces. The pace of this game is quite overwhelming, frankly. The uh, amount of pressure that the Red Viper is under. Still not seeing any Tech 3 coming out from Zlow. As we hit 22 minutes in this one. Biggest problem for the Red Viper from the drops generally is this band of rhinos. One volley from those reducers. Be enough there to knock out that PD. 
on brick against many rhinos. Too much firepower. And now the power grid for the Red Viper is in serious jeopardy. We do have another brick coming in. And the power grid is shielded. But that won't matter once those rhinos get inside. And inside they will get shield generator taking damage. Down it goes and... Four T2 power generators are exposed. Needs to prioritize his fire much better. He does. Down goes one and another. Can he get the last two? One of them is very badly damaged indeed on 460 HP. Down goes that one. They just need to get that last one. It's absolutely critical. Well, they haven't managed it. That's a major... Laps in concentration there for Zlow, as far as I'm concerned. Red Viper would have been absolutely screwed, for lack of a better word, on power. Had he managed to finish that off, he'd be thrilled he's been able to hold on to it. Meanwhile, Band of Assorted T3 and T2 and T1 made its way up the eastern approach there from the Red Viper now taking some Corsair fire Not a great place to stand generally if you're going to march them that far forward it's best to do something with them Zlow still firmly in control of the side arms and a couple of cheeky Medusas at the back still causing problems probably not for very long though as a Hoplite and a Loyalist are sent in to deal with it Another Jester out over in the west for the Red Viper, trying to tickle that Rhino to death. Should be relatively easy to take care of those Medusas once that's down. There it goes. Ah, oh, but it's another T2 mechs out of commission. For some reason, the uh, Ecos just aren't moving in the right direction, considering the amount of headway Zlow has apparently been making. What I don't understand is why he hasn't gone T3 yet. He's still hurling out the rhinos. This is sometimes a issue people find themselves in when they're having so much success with a single strategy. They don't feel like it's uh, time to rock the boat and tech up when you think you've got your opponent on the ropes. But... Uh, the Red Viper's been at T3 for a long old time now. And uh, it's close to have completed the repairs on that power grid of his. Still in the lead on mass. I cannot believe it. So Zlow not taking advantage of the map control he's got. Not developing his eco. It's hardly surprising, I guess, with the sheer quantity of harassment that he's been throwing the Red Viper's way. And uh, we've reached the first major lull for a good 10 minutes or so. And having said that, it immediately comes to an end as another drop lands at the bottom right-hand corner there for Zlo. Doesn't immediately take control of those and send them in. But uh, it could probably do with holding off for a bit, waiting for the engineers to come down and reclaim that base. What's going to happen here is they're going to get slaughtered by those loyalists, of course, having the benefit of uh, full and total vision. Can make just about anybody appear a smarty pants. Now they got a mantis out of it. Totally worth it. Brick holding the line up front there for Viper. But still no T3. That brick gets in closer, getting the top of its 
main weapon over the profile of those wall sections. Allowing it to land some direct hits on that point defence. Trebuchet has perhaps come a little bit far forward. It's taking a lot of damage there, down to 350 HP. I don't think it's going to escape either as a whole bunch of rhinos come in. Trying to pick off this forward task force of the Red Vipers. Working on that fourth T2 as we speak. Yet more drops brought in, though. The Viper kind of stationing T3 units in various places to counter those drops. The Viper just happy to tactically withdraw and lay down brick fire on this column of rhinos as they approach. Not a favourable situation there for Zlo, who agrees and withdraws with what troops he has. And we're still not putting that T3 upgrade on the land factory. Well, we've gone T3 air, so that's fair enough. He's going to have to really make things pay. Make something pay with the uh, strap bombers. <laughs> Straight for two landed scout planes at the back. He can come in and get a couple of them together and take down that power grid once again. That should be enough to allow himself to get back in this. But I really can't believe what I'm seeing Eco-wise, Red Viper still somehow ahead, despite all of the pressure he's been under. But a little tack missile base on the corner of the side island there. Just going to go after the resourcing option of... Oh, that's very nice indeed. Going straight after a power storage there. Chain reaction going off. Taking down uh, the transport that was being built in that air factory. But yeah, really needs to put those strap bombers to work. I think he's going to need them pretty sharpish, actually. Going to go put again straight in after that bouncer and that banger. That's low. Always one to be aggressive. He's going to go on the offensive with them instead. Well, this could work out, I guess. If uh, somehow managed to hold the front line, it's going to be tough, though. Every time there's a little probing attack from the Red Viper, he seems to be doing it with a larger group of bricks. And these drops don't seem to be working as they were before. Coming up against T3 units every time now. Been better off dropping it in here again. Strap bombers are we up to now for Zlo? Well, four on the field so far. Red Viper with a few power issues. Well behind in eco now after all of the sniping that's been going off. No, I tell a lie, he's still comfortably ahead. I swear the uh, eco reader's getting worse. But 31 minutes gone in this 
in a game that you sort of feel perhaps should have been over a while ago and it should have been slow celebrating the win it's actually looking like it could be a very different outcome if this carries on so many bricks down here and slow's got nothing really to counter them with I'm surprised that he's not using his strats on that ground force another drop coming in down here but it's almost not worth covering them anymore They haven't really been effectual for quite some time. And the structure's just going pop one after another in Zlo's main base now. He's lost four factories and two mexes, and goodness knows how many T1 P gens. They are rolling into range of those Cerberus turrets, which are a little bit further back now. Viper. Think about going after Zlo's power grid and repaying the compliment that he received earlier. And that's what he's going to do. Down goes one T2 P gen and another. The shield gen, which was turned off in the center, that's gone down. And only the third one as well. And the fourth to boot and the fifth. And that is pretty much all of Zlo's power generation. Would you look at that? That total net power generation. Minus 2,700. Not looking good at all. And I think Red Viper just won the game. In come the Strat Bombers, which were, say, amassing. Not really amassing for three or four strats on the side of the map there. The trouble is going to run straight into a huge wave of Bouncer and Tracer Fire trying to go after the Snipe. Red Viper sitting happily under his shield coverage. And there's only one strat bomber left. I cannot believe what I'm seeing here. Just didn't go Slow's way at all. The shield is finally depleted but Slow throws out the GG after seeing the lack of fire effect on the Red Viper with those strap bombers. His ACU is hidden right up here at the top of the map. But well done, the Red Viper, for holding on as long as he did. Slow saying didn't expect him to get to T3 at all. I gotta say I didn't expect him to either with the amount of pressure that Slow was piling on. <laughs> Red Viper asking uh, Slow if he was too lazy to go for T3. That seems to be the way of things. The last few structures going pop on that rear plateau there. Zlow sitting up at the corner. And he confesses he thought he was going to win. Not often you see someone with that much territory. Both side islands. That much pressure coming in. And uh, also being a couple of hundred global ladder ranking points above. Uh, or a couple of hundred la ladder ranking pubs uh, points above his opponent not come out with the win but uh, it happens and you see everything in this game you really do as uh, as low control k's everything and officially surrenders well there you go ladder junkies i thought we'd had a few too many team games you were right and it's always good to chuck a ladder in there i hope you enjoyed that as always more to come from me in the future and hopefully on a more regular basis in the meantime though guys stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.